So after a rough entry into the SEC in 2012, Mizzou has bounced back rather well with a couple surprising trips to the SEC championship game. Let's talk uh, the 2015 recruiting class with the Jack Hummel of KOMU-TV, the University of Missouri uh, station there. Jack, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, appreciate the time. Oh, well, Mark, thank you for having me. I really appreciate you having me on. Yeah, let's look at this class with it ranked... Uh, I've got anything from 18th to 29th, depending on your service. So just your general thoughts about uh, the class that came in uh, last Wednesday. You know, last Wednesday, you know, obviously from a sports writer perspective, but also as a, just a Mizzou fan, was extremely exciting. Um, you know, we had a, a group of 23 recruits, a fairly large class, um, many ranging from three all the way to four and five-star players, um, but just overall an extremely talented group of young players. Um, and I think the best way to, uh, you know, to map out this year's recruiting, um, you know, finish on Wednesday, last Wednesday was, you know, it's a really simple equation for Missouri. It's success plus exposure is just bringing in better recruits. Um, you know, like you mentioned, you have back-to-back -back SEC championships, um, both last year and then this year, two back-to-back -back SEC championship appearances, two years in a row. Uh, Bowl victories on top of that. And aside from, you know, just the success and numbers aspect of it, you have continued development both in the program, facilities, etc. Um, and also the production of NFL players. And, you know, it's been said the Mizzou Tigers are out now more than they've ever been this year, and especially in their third year in the SEC, like you said, following a rough start in 2012. Um, Desmond Howard from ESPN, you said it best, the perception uh, of the Missouri Tigers is really starting to change. And, you know, Since they entered the SEC in 2012, despite all the success, they still have that lack of respect that they've always been talking about. That's always been, you know, you've always heard about since the beginning um, and since they've started winning. But they really don't care about that. You know, in, in reporting and talking with players, regardless if you respect them or not, they're here to develop and they're here to win. So, it's, I mean, it's extremely exciting. Jack, I see three players listed uh, in the ESPN Top 300. I see uh, two or three listed in the Top 10 at their positions nationally. Uh, who are some of the guys that you're excited to see on the field? Well, definitely. I think first of all, you have to, you know you can't go without saying the first name is uh, Terry Beckner Jr., the five-star defensive tackle from East St. Louis, Missouri. He's ranked second highest recruit by ESPN this year. Um, and again, it goes back to that you know D-line zoo um, that they talk about that they've coined themselves. You know, they he turned down offers from the past three national championships. So that in itself, I think, speaks volume not only from um, you know the Missouri team in general, but the defensive line and the defensive coaches. Um, that's a that was a huge signing for Missouri, and you know up until the last minute, it wasn't you know we, we weren't sure on where um, Beckner Jr. was going, and so for, I think for Missouri to have picked him up, I think was incredibly huge. And aside from that, um, you know Missouri or Missouri has signed the top recruit, obviously from Illinois, being Beckner Jr., but also from Missouri and Kansas. Um, from Missouri, the number one recruit, six foot four, two hundred pound quarterback Drew Locke, and also from Kansas, AJ Harris, uh, the number one recruit out of Kansas. So I think that in itself, you know, right now you have quarterback Matty Mock, um, you know, in, obviously in a starting position, going for his second year as a starter, um, and after. Fairly successful, up and down, somewhat season last year. I think it's going to be great to bring in a quarterback like Drew Locke, um, the number one recruit. Again, a huge, huge sign for Missouri, um, and kind of get him into the mix of things and you know let him find his spot. So, Jack, based on the 2014 team and the transition to 2015 in regards to losses, positional gaps, some some holes on the team, where could some of these guys contribute? Where do you see? The, the matches where we, we see talent coming in from this class versus some of the needs on the team. Most definitely. You know, and that's the thing, uh, you know, with any recruiting job and with any recruit is you come into a program where obviously you're coming in as an underdog regardless of where you're ranked coming in and, you know, in the in terms of recruiting class, um, but these guys are going to look to just kind of get in and find their spot in this Missouri team. Again, you know, regardless of rankings and how they've done in the past year, and it's early in their SEC, you know, years. But I think, um, you know, this team's been successful, and these players know that. But they're right, like I said, they're excited and they've seen the success, and now they want in. So I think these players, you know, their mindset going in has to be open. But at the same time, they're going to tell these coaches, and they're going to be able to talk to them and say, "This is where I feel comfortable." I think obviously Beckner, you know, you're going to see him as a defensive tackle. I think that's obvious, but there's other guys like you know there's uh, six foot six foot 175 pound wide receiver, but also defensive back Cam Hilton uh, from Webster Groves, who you know me, myself being a St. Louis guy, um, and 
very close friends with Cam, and just t in talking with him uh, this past weekend back in St. Louis, he's extremely excited um, just to kind of get in and start playing with these guys. You know, recruiting not only was an exciting day and just a memorable day for the memorable day for these guys, um, you know, signing themselves, but just seeing who they're going to be playing with and their future teammates is extremely exciting. Um, and like I said, they're excited. So as far as position goes for these recruits, I think they have to have they have to be open minded. But I think at the same time, you get in and you just make yourself available to wherever you can help the team. Hey Jack, you know the recruiting ground out there much better than I do. So correct me if I'm wrong, Missouri. Uh, Kansas, we're not talking California, Texas, Florida. We're also not even talking you know, Ohio, Pennsylvania. But we're not talking Montana. We're, we're talking about some substantial players that come out of that area. Uh, I'm looking at the top 10 or 12 players in this class. I'm seeing uh, Kansas show up. I'm seeing, like you mentioned, St. Louis, East St. Louis. Uh, again, a couple of Kansas kids as well. But then going outside of that footprint and, and needing to go elsewhere, needing to go to the southeast like everybody else does, is, is there a particular uh, pipeline that you see forming? Uh, Gary Pinkle has been in place for quite some time, but now being in the SEC, have things changed uh, to, a certain, uh, to a certain extent? You know, I think you have to agree um, that they have changed. And, you know, Gary Pinkle in his 15th season coming up this year with Missouri, um, you know, he's established himself, you know, both before entering the SEC and now in his third year, um, going on his fourth year in the SEC. Um, there's obviously, he's had a huge, huge recruiting pull um, from, like you said, locally and around the Missouri, Kansas, Illinois area. Um, they're constantly, you know, he's it's, it's coined, he's in his helicopter all the time, flying over to St. Louis, flying over, you know, during the fall to check out these guys in their games. Um, but I think, you know, as this program is going to establish themselves as an SEC team and, like I said, gain that respect um, throughout the Southeastern Conference, I think more and more you'll see that spread of, you know, a pipeline there to where he's pulling players from different areas. We'll get more of the California. We'll get some of the more southern schools, the Texas, um, even more so than we're doing now. So I think, um, like anything else, with time, I think you'll see more of an expansion, just like this program's expanded in the three years they've been in the SEC. Jack Hummel joins us from KOMU uh, on the University of Missouri and also has done some work for ESPNU. So you alluded, Jack, to one of the selling points for any coaching staff, and that's that we can move players on to the NFL. Mizzou's been able to do that, especially on the defensive side, and, and one reason that, uh, that Shane Ray wasn't able to get on the field much in 2013 is because there were a couple of uh, NFL defensive ends, so he got part-time playing time, and then he really emerged last season. Uh, now moving on to the NFL, so he's a great example of what can be done there in Columbia. So your thoughts about Shane Ray, his NFL draft status, and where he stands? You know, you're exactly right. Shane Ray, um, being a very close friend of mine and someone that I've just kind of been able to uh, kind of hang around with and talk to this past year, it's really been a privilege just because overall he's just a great guy. And it's the same with a lot of these players. They carry that Mizzou-made mentality of just being responsible both on and off the field. Um, and even in the instance of when you saw um, – and the possible suspension after the hit um, in the Alabama game. You know, you see, you know, players come back from that and bounce back, um, both in their interviews and just how they handle themselves and how they approach, you know, reapproaching the field. And, you know, Shane's just one of those guys who, uh, you know, all around is just a great guy. But, um, you know, Defensive Player of the Year, All-American, first team All-SEC. I uh, recorded 65 tackles last season, 25 tackles. 22 tack, I believe 22 or 23 tackles for loss, 14 and a half sacks, breaking the record that was held by Michael, Sam, and Alden Smith. You know, again, it's the D-line zoo. It's this 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 defensive line that Missouri prides themselves on. You know, as it's known here in Columbia. So, I mean, like I said, ever since Shane Ray announced for the NFL draft uh, a couple weeks, you know, about a month ago, there's been enormous speculation uh, in the potential places where we could see him go. A lot of talk about possibly the Redskins at five, the Bears at seven. Um, but I truly think you could see Shane Ray go maybe at three or four to either Jacksonville or Oakland. You know, Chicago Bears desperately need help on defense. You know, they've allowed more points in the, than any other NFL team in the last two years. But I think you see, I think you see Shane go either three or four, um, like I said, to Jacksonville or Oakland. Um, but like I said, it's going to be exciting. It's exciting around Missouri here. Um, even though he's not training with these guys, getting ready for a spring ball right now, they're excited to see where he's going to go. They know he's working hard this off season, um, and they're going to be here cheering him on. Um, when that NFL draft comes around. Jack Hummel of KOMU on the University of Missouri uh, campus there. 
done some work for ESPNU as well. Jack, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate uh, the insight. Thanks for having me, Mark.